Hi everyone, so I'm finally filming my brush declutter. I'm gonna be doing it in two parts because as you can see, I have a lot of brushes. I mostly keep them in these Alex drawers. I have two drawers for them. One which contains the majority of my brushes and then another one which contains brushes that I use most frequently. So in this drawer, I have mostly my Japanese face brushes, larger ones that I don't want to intermingle with all the other brushes. And then a couple of brushes that I really use very frequently for foundation, these Morphe M43s and Sigma and It Cosmetics. I also have a ton of brushes that I keep on my desk as well that are in my current rotation that are dirty as you can see. And then every now and again, when they get a little bit too gunky, I swap them out. I also have one shelf in my wardrobe of brushes that I don't really use, but I keep, I guess, on display because they're part of a set. They're mostly from Spectrum Collections, which gets me every time with their cutesy packaging. So we're starting off with flat foundation brushes. I did separate my brushes just to make it a little bit easier. I have nine of them. Now, these are the brushes that I used to use a lot when I first started getting into makeup. These are really good for kind of painting on liquid cream foundations or cream products and then blending them out with a sponge. That's how I kind of used these brushes mostly. So the first one we have is from Becca. This is probably one of the oldest flat foundation brushes I have. This is discontinued, unfortunately. It's very sturdy, it's dense, a synthetic flat brush. It's very good quality. Next we have this one from Sicily, and this is another synthetic hair brush. I gravitate towards this brush when I want something with a little bit more flexibility and give in the bristles. Then we have this MAC one. It is a brush that they had before they went synthetic. It's made of horse hair and it's limited edition and made in China. Unfortunately, this one is pretty old now and the ferrule is coming apart. So I'm gonna be decluttering this one. This crown brush is one of the cheapest and most basic flat foundation brushes I have. It's usable, so I'm gonna keep it. Moving on to this prescriptives brush. I I have no idea how this ended up in my collection. It's possibly one that I stole from my mom. It's actually a really good sturdy brush, so I'm gonna hold onto this one. Next we have this Hakuhoto brush. This is made of synthetic hair, and it does have an angled edge, so you can get a little bit more of a precise application with it. And it is a little bit smaller, so it can kind of fit into smaller areas on the face. Next we have this e.l.f. brush. This is kind of like a really old brush, one of the first brushes I got when I first got into makeup. Surprisingly, it has held up really well over the years, and it's totally usable, so I'm gonna keep this one. This IT Cosmetics brush is a very unique brush to my collection. It's good for precise application of complexion makeup because it's dense and tapered and it's got that pointed head. So it does work really well to get around the curves of your face. So this Zoeva brush did come as part of the Queen's Guard set. Otherwise I probably wouldn't have bought a brush with this shape, but it is again, good for kind of painting on areas where you need it because it's kind of got a really large surface area. So of the nine flat foundation brushes, I'm keeping eight and decluttering one, mostly because it's falling apart, which to me says that it is time to go. So I do have two different types of stippling brushes, these larger, more traditional ones, and then later I'll show you the smaller dual fiber ones that I use. I definitely have a preference for a smaller head, which is why I only have three of these larger ones. So this L&Y brush, this is an eBay brand and it's made of natural and synthetic fibers. It's a decent brush. It's not the best quality by all means, but I mean the price also reflects that. And because I don't use these brushes a whole ton, I'm going to pass this along to someone who will get more use out of it. So this Mizuho brush, this is basically the better quality version of the Ellen Y brush. It is a mix of synthetic and Ototsuho hair, which I had to Google. This is actually the shoulder of the goat, which is interesting that they specify it. And I noticed that a lot of Japanese brands do that. So this Pat McGrath brush, this came with one of the skin fetish sets. This is a really awful brush. It is very stiff, very scratchy on the skin, and it is really disappointing coming from a premium brand like Pat McGrath to release such terrible quality, to be honest, which is why I'm getting rid of this one as well as the L&Y brushes, and I'm just gonna keep the Mizuho brush. So these dual fiber brushes are kind of like the more modern version of a stippling brush. And this is definitely more my thing. I prefer this type of shape, angled and a little bit more dense. So this Wayne Gosser one brush, I believe I got it in a lucky bag. This brush, it's dirty as you can see because I've been using it. I like this one, but I feel like this is best for kind of smaller areas and not 
obviously super liquidy types of formulas otherwise you will get streaking i find it kind of better for like concealers or thicker foundations so this one is a slightly larger duo fiber brush the bristles are a bit longer so there's a bit more flexibility and it doesn't absorb as much product it's not as dense as the wayne goss 01 brush so i find that this is better for you know when you don't want as much coverage so this L&Y brush is basically a dupe for the Hakuhodo brush. I was curious to see how it compares. They actually perform really similarly, but in terms of quality, the L&Y brush is definitely more lightweight. There's not that weightiness that the Hakuhodo one has. Like it just feels like a sturdier brush. The bristles on the L&Y ones are slightly, they just feel slightly less dense than the Hakuhodo ones. Like there's less hairs in it, but Besides that, they perform pretty similarly. So I believe this is the largest dual fiber brush that Hakuhoto offers. I kind of wish they would make their brushes a little bit bigger because I kind of want a brush that covers more surface area just to make things quicker and um, yeah, just fast application. Fun fact about these Hakuhoto brushes when I was reading up on them, when they have an odd number at the end like this one, it means that the distance between the goat hairs and the synthetic fibers are shorter which means that it produces a heavier application anyway i do enjoy all these brushes and i will be keeping all of them so these are what i categorize as cream foundation brushes because i use them for kind of thicker creamier foundations or concealers and i have three of them so I remember this to be one of the first luxury brushes that I ever bought. And I remember it being quite expensive. This is a brush that I used to use with my Shu Uemura Nobara Stick Foundation. Since I no longer use that foundation, I don't use it as frequently. However, it's still a good brush. It's held up really well over the years. Then we have this larger Chikohoto one. This is also made of goat. It is one that I probably reach for the most out of the three of them, just because it is a larger brush. And that means that I don't have to spend as much time putting on my foundation. So this Kyoto one is very similar to the Shuomura one in terms of shape. It is made of goat hair from the shoulder and forefoot side. I'm not going to pronounce the Japanese word because it's, I can't speak Japanese very well, so don't want to butcher it. going to keep these three because I do enjoy these brushes and use them. Moving on to buffing foundation brushes. Now these are the brushes that I have a lot of because I use the most frequently. It's my preferred way of applying foundation, uh, liquid cream, bronzer, things like that. And so I have various shapes and sizes, mostly the rounded type as well as the flat and a few angled buffing brushes as well. Now these Morphe 439 brushes, you'll see me use a lot in my tutorials because they are my preferred brush for applying foundation, most of my foundations anyway. I have the old ones as well as the newer ones. And I have to say, I prefer the older make ones. I just find that it's more dense. The ones from the new, well, newly manufactured, they're not the same. They're not exactly the same. They're just a little bit less dense, a little bit more flexible in the bristles. And I just want something a little bit more dense than that. And I think that's because I use a lot of sheer foundations I do prefer the older one. I think I got it free in a subscription box at some point in time and um, I only kind of discovered that I liked them a lot later. Otherwise, I probably would have picked more up at the time. So these Real Technique brushes, they're actually the first and only Real Technique brushes I've ever tried because I was very curious. The claim is basically that these hairs are supposed to mimic squirrel hair, which, sorry to break it to everyone, but they don't feel quite as soft. They are very soft though, and it is a nice brush. So we have another Zoeva brush from the Queen's Guard set. I do like this brush. I think the Zoeva buffing brushes are not bad. It's not my favorite flat top one, but it still does its job. Same with the Sigma one. I think this is the only Sigma brush I have. I think the pink handle was a limited edition to raise money for breast cancer, if I'm not mistaken. It's okay, nothing too impressive. Now this It Cosmetics brush is my favorite flat top buffing brush. I love this to blend out, you know, cream, liquid blushes, bronzers. I feel like it just blends it out, makes it really easy. Apparently it's made with 88,400 hair count, which is interesting. It is definitely on the more expensive side at $68. So it is, I would say, more of a luxury synthetic brush. On the flip side, we have this e.l.f. one, which is a lot more affordable. This is, again, one of the first brushes I ever got when I started getting into makeup. But uh, the handle, 
it's it's had better days so I'm gonna let this one go now this my kit co brush it is a brush I got off Selfridges on a whim it is a synthetic brush it's angled and it's a makeup artist brand co-founded by James Malloy he was the artistic director of Mac for Asia Pacific now this is an example of a brush that I got purely on the packaging in a moment of weakness it's not the best I'm not the biggest biggest fan of spectrum brushes I don't think they're the best synthetic brushes they are fine uh, but I think you can get better for less here is another one and this was part of the Mean Girls set. As you can see, it is dirty and it needs a wash soon. It is basically very similar to the Sigma one and the Zoeva one in terms of shape. I do think that the Sigma one and the Zoeva ones are better though. So I am keeping all of these ones and then throwing out this Elf one because it's falling apart. But you know what, it's held up for a very long time so it's pretty impressive for the price. So here is a category of brushes that I admit I don't use very frequently unless I'm falling behind on washing my brushes and I really need a powder brush because I tend to gravitate towards my Japanese powder brushes. These Tarte ones were kindly given to me by my mom. She bought them when she was overseas. I don't know what she was thinking, but I, I, can't, I can't seem to get rid of them. I can't seem to part with them because, um, because they were a gift from my mom. They're monstrous though. Another Spectrum brush, nothing special about it except for that it's from Mean Girls and I don't use it all too frequently. I don't know, I feel like there's not enough meat to this brush. I feel like I can't get a good kind of lay down of powder with it. Now this one, I prefer the shape just because it's a bit denser, more rounded, less splayed out and I feel like there's a good concentration of bristles on the tip of the brush so you can actually lay down decent amount of powder. We have another e.l.f. brush which is about 10 years old. These brushes uh, are starting to fall apart because of the age and because of the quality but I, I feel like you know 10 years is pretty good run. Time to go. Another Real Techniques powder blur brush and this one is much larger. Look I like the concept behind this but I feel like they should have padded this collection out a bit more. This is another Zoeva brush from the Queen's Guard set. It's made of vegan tacklon hair it's probably one of the better ones of this category. So I am keeping all of them except for the e.l.f. one which is falling apart. Now these are my treasured Japanese powder brushes. I feel like I use these quite frequently. They all get some love. Some are definitely more than others. They definitely are kind of like the biggest expense out of all my brushes. Just because I feel like I'm, I am willing to pay more for a face brush that I use on such a large surface area. They are handmade and yeah, obviously there's a lot of hairs involved when it comes to making a face brush. I also do use a face brush daily, so for me it's kind of worth the cost. Obviously if you don't powder your face, then it's not gonna be worth buying an expensive Japanese powder brush. So this Chikihoto brush is from their Passion series. It is made of, I believe, dyed goat hair. And while it is soft, it's definitely on the coarser side in terms of goat hair, so I don't really reach for this one as much as some of my other more luxurious brushes, but it is a good brush. Then we have this Koyudo brush, and this was a gift from my mum when she went to Japan. And I believe this is part of the Loha series, which is a synthetic range. I believe it's plant-derived PPD corn, and supposedly it's more natural than the usual chemically made synthetic hairs. Now this Hakuhodo brush is one of the softest brushes I have, if not the softest brush in my collection. It is made of blue squirrel hair and it is one of my favorite face brushes for the reason that it is very soft and it feels great on my skin. This Hakuhodo brush was part of their Toyoko holiday set for 2018. It's partly made of goat hair as well as squirrel hair. I also really enjoy this particular length of brush as well. It's kind of like my optimal length for a brush. So this Shuomura brush did come in a travel set and again it's not my favorite shape. That kind of like onigiri rounded triangle shape. I just find that doesn't disperse powder the way I like it to. These kind of shapes are a little bit too floppy and just kind of flip flop on your face. Now this is the Yujiya brush that I picked up when I was in Japan last and it is made out of squirrel hair. I love the handles on it. I think the brush looks really beautifully made. It is a longer, more tapered brush so I feel like it's really nice for patting on powder on the center of your face. So this Hakuhoto brush is part of their iconic S series range which is basically characterized by this beautiful vermilion handle. The furrow is made of brass and it is 24 karat gold plated with clear coating. It's gorgeous honestly. I 
I want all the brushes from this range because they're just aesthetically very pleasing to me. This is a nice brush for putting powder on the cheeks. I like to use it for that area and it's made of goat hair. It's actually one of their more popular face brushes from this series. Now this is a Refa brush that Refa kindly sent to me and I have to say I really do enjoy this one. This is part of their core collection and I think it is a really good set. Now I don't usually buy sets but I think every brush in this set is actually functional. It's a really nice brush because it is small but it's also got a nice density to it. So these are two Kyoto Heart Face Brushes. <laughs> They're really really just they're just cute. They're made of 80% baby goat chest hair and 20% PBT, which is polybutylene terephthalate, and that's basically synthetic hair. Now I have used these brushes before, but because they've kind of got that dip in between, it doesn't disperse powder particularly evenly. So they are kind of more for show than for anything else. And of course, because I love these brushes so much, I am not gonna get rid of any of them. I'm keeping all of them. For those wondering how I store some of these brushes, I did buy these really cute brush holders from Hakuhodo. They do sell them. They're great for displaying brushes. Moving on to some tapered powder brushes. And these brushes are great for kind of placing powder in in, you know smaller areas like the under eye area around the nose center of the face or if you just want to be more precise with your powder application and I mostly use these for cheek products or contour products the first one we have is from Zoeva and this is a putty face definer brush it is synthetic as is I believe everything from this set this is from the Queen's Guard set I don't think I mentioned it before but this set was inspired by the uniform of the Queen's Guard. I guess it's pretty self-explanatory. This is from the Dubious Place turquoise set that I got off it was either Beauty Bay or from Juvia's Place directly. It's nice and tapered, so it's great for kind of like setting your under eye area, things like that. Next, we have a Makeup Forever brush, and I actually really like the look of this brush. It is the only Makeup Forever brush that I have. It does say wavy on the side of the brush because apparently each brush is made with a balance of straight and wavy fibers, and that's supposed to replicate natural hair fibers because I believe all the brushes in Makeup Forever's range are synthetic. So this is a brush from Ella Cosmetics. It's an Aussie brand that I first heard beauty news talk about. So I was really curious to try out some of their brushes and their beauty sponges are amazing. This brush feels really nice quality. The bristles, while they are synthetic, they don't feel plasticky like some of the synthetic brushes I have do. And yeah, I think if you're looking for a good synthetic brush, they make some really nice ones. Here is another Real Techniques brush from the Powder Blur collection. It's another synthetic brush with pretty soft bristles Obviously not as soft as blue score hair, but pretty good non-plasticky feeling. So this is another Zoeva brush from the Queen's Guard set, and this is the highlight brush, which I don't tend to pack on a lot of highlights, so this is not a brush that I use for that purpose. So while that one was made of Taclon hair, this one actually is a natural synthetic mix. So I was wrong, not all the brushes in this set are synthetic. Some have goat hair mixed in as well. Just bear that in mind if you are someone that only uses synthetic hair brushes. And as you can see on the handle, there's the Queen's Guard logo. We've got a similar shape brush from Spectrum. This is again, part of the Mean Girls collection and all their brushes are synthetic, vegan type of thing. And then lastly, we've got this Smith Cosmetics brush. This is made of black goat hair. It's a little bit scratchy. It's not my favorite. Uh, brush from them. I do prefer the eye brushes over the face brushes that I've tried from this brand. So yeah, they're all good functional brushes and I'll be keeping all of them. So these are my Japanese tapered brushes and these are the ones I gravitate towards when I want a tapered brush just because they are a little bit more luxurious feeling on the skin and yeah, that's kind of what I prefer. I just find them less scratchy and irritating on my face. So the first brush is again, part of the Toyoko holiday set from 2018 that came with the blue for all and kind of, it's a pleasant white handle. And this is actually a mix of goat and synthetic hair. So this is another one of my favorite face brushes. This is made of blue squirrel hair. However, when I look on the website, it looks like it's now a blend of blue squirrel and goat. I don't think it's a all blue squirrel hair brush now. So I might just have an older model. So these are my favorite Wayne Goss brushes. They're the air brushes. I use these pretty much all the time because I just think they're just such good multi-purpose brushes. They're great for diffusing powder really nicely setting powder, blush, bronzer, you name it. I use this for a lot of a lot of powders. And that's why I have two because these are constantly in my rotation. So yes, I do cherish these brushes and I will be continuing to use them. 
So we've got a couple of angled powder brushes. I love a good angled brush because again, multi-purpose, can use them for bronzer and blush, which is what I tend to do. Like this Spectrum one, this is the AO5 brush and it's from the Zodiac set. I know it looks like a kid's brush, but I think it's really cute with all the stars. So this is also an AO5 brush from a different set. This is from the Mean Girls set, but I have to say they don't look the same. One definitely looks a little bit more angled and less dense than the other. Like the Zodiac one looks like it's just got more bristles packed together. I don't know, but apparently it's the same brush. Next, I have a Zoeva Sheer Cheek Brush and it's made of goat hair and I would agree that this is more for a sheer application of powder because it is quite fluffy so when you do apply your powder, it will result in a more sheerer and lighter application. Next, we have this 04 brush from Refa and this is from their core collection. Now, this brush is kind of like a smaller version of the MAC 168 brush which I love and adore and is no longer made because it is synthetic so I'm glad to have this one and I really do enjoy it. As you can see, they are very similar. Now, the reason why I love this MAC brush so much and have used it so, so frequently and I still gravitate towards it to this day is because it's a really nice multi-purpose brush for blush and bronzer. I like to kind of take the blush on the bottom end and then bronzer on the tip of the tapered end. And I find that it just works really well to get a really nice blend of bronzer, blush, highlight, everything kind of is in sync, in synergy. So yeah, I'm really glad I have all these brushes. Um, they're one of my favorite kind of shapes of brushes and I definitely don't need any more. Now I have four fan brushes, two which are from Sonia G and two which are the more traditional fan brushes. Now I never used to use fan brushes and I never used to think that they made any difference until I tried the Sonia G ones and they changed my life, I feel, in a way. Now the first one is the Sculpt 2 brush and this is made of dyed Psycho goat hair which is from the chest. I just love the shape of this brush. It's got enough density to it, there's enough fibers in it, it's soft enough to actually make a really significant difference when you're applying your highlight. So basically the difference between the Sculpt 2 and the Sculpt 4 is that the Sculpt 4 has that slightly angled edge so I love using it the same way that I use my angled brushes. So highlight on one end, bronzer on the other, or highlight on one end, blush on the other, and it just gives a really nice diffused look when you're adding those two powders with the same brush. So this is more of your traditional fan shape and I don't use these brushes a whole ton to be honest. They just don't blend out highlighter as well as the other ones because they're just, they're too fluffy for my liking. Same with the Zoeva one. So I am gonna keep all of them and I don't really plan on buying, well, I am eyeing the Sculpt one if I'm honest. Concealer brushes. Now I have three, one, two, three, can count. Well done me. And um, two of the same Zoeva brushes. I really actually like these brushes. I use these brushes quite frequently. They're just a great shape for kind of buffing out spot concealer and buffing out or blending out edges of concealer, things like that. And then lastly, we've got this Bare Minerals or Bare Essentials as they used to be called concealer brush. It's just a flat concealer brush, really great for just placing concealer and then using another buffing brush or sponge to blend things out. And because I use them all pretty frequently, I'm gonna be keeping all of them. So last category are miscellaneous face brushes that I didn't know where to clump together because they all have kind of more unique or interesting shapes. We've got a Luxie brush. I have no idea how this one ended up in my collection. I think I got it free with some sort of purchase or things like that. It calls itself a contouring brush, but I feel like it's too splayed out to actually do any contouring really. I just can't see myself using this for contouring. I don't think I've even used it once. So I'm gonna pass this one along. This is a Smith Cosmetics cream contour brush and I don't think I've ever used it for that purpose. I think because I forget that it's for that purpose, but when I look on the website, that's what it's for. Yeah, I need to start using this brush. Again, love the aesthetic of the Smith Cosmetics brushes. They just look really well made. This is a Chikohoto contour brush. Now it is kind of a strange shape because it's so small and dense. I honestly don't use it very frequently. I think it's because it's a little bit too small for my liking 
for a contour brush. It is made out of grey scruel hair, so it's super, super soft. Lastly, we've got this Spectrum brush. This is described as a magic wand for highlighting and setting, and um, I don't use it for either of those purposes. But again, it came in a set, and I like to keep my sets complete, so I'm going to be keeping all these ones and getting rid of the Luxie brush. So we're finally done, and I've decluttered six. I know it's not a whole ton, but for the most part, I am really happy with my face brush collection. These are brushes I would consider unusable because they're either falling apart, they're a bit scratchy on my face, or I have no purpose for them. So I think that's a good outcome for me. I hope you enjoyed it and eye brushes will be coming soon. Thanks for watching.